Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. And today, we will be returning, once again, to our favorite pink puffball just before his 30th birthday. And as many of you might know, Kirby has had a lot of spin-offs over the years, and they're very creative and try out many ideas. Without them, Kirby wouldn't have made a, such a seamless transition into 3D with Forgotten Land, since Air Ride, Blowout Blast, and Battle Royale laid the groundwork. Some of them, such as Epic Yarn, have been very successful, while many others have been forgotten due to their age, poor sales, or the consoles that they're on. In this video, I will be taking a look at some of my favorite underrated Kirby spin-offs, games that are very enjoyable but only had a limited audience to play them. I won't be alone though, since the greatest YouTuber from Dreamland, Channel Kirby, will be joining me. I'm Channel Kirby, the soon-to-be biggest Kirby-focused channel on YouTube. If you like analysis on gameplay, speculations and discussions about the series, as well as live hardcore challenges, then this is the right place for you. Sometimes we like to tackle Nintendo-related topics in general, but our goal will always be to share the potential of the Kirby franchise and give the series the recognition it deserves. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the most underrated Kirby spin-offs. The first game we'll look at is Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, which was the sequel to Kirby Canvas Curse. This game is often overlooked by its predecessor on the DS, likely due to its higher sales and recognition among more fans. Rainbow Curse is also on the Wii U, and has understandably never been ported to the Switch due to its control scheme, which is another factor that led this game into obscurity. It's unfortunate, because this game is very fun, I even found it to be more enjoyable than Canvas Curse, but that's subjective. The touchscreen controls are very fluid and are definitely one of my favorite uses of the gamepad. The levels also have a lot of depth and allow for exploration because of the relatively large areas. There are also hidden figurines and music tracks to be found in each level which gives you an incentive to explore each area. Instead of copy abilities like in Canvas Curse, this game has three different transformations which are comparable to the ones in the Yoshi games or Epic Yarn, but have fully fleshed out movesets. These transformations are very fun to use since they completely change up the gameplay and allow for more unique level design in their respective levels. The boss fights are also more fleshed out than the ones in its predecessor since they're actually more normal boss fights integrated to the gameplay rather than just doing minigames. My only problem with them is that the first three are overused and are just used again, which is disappointing since they definitely could have had more interesting bosses in the later worlds of the game. Finally, this game also has an interesting art style since it has a realistic clay style to it. Visually, it looks very nice, even when looking at the gamepad throughout most of the game. The music is also really good, and it has to be one of my favorite soundtracks in the Kirby franchise. Overall, Rainbow Curse is a great sequel to Canvas Curse, and I would definitely recommend it if it was more accessible. The Kirby franchise is full of different spin-offs and it's only natural that some of these would disappear in the minds of people because of either being too niche or simply getting overshadowed. A good example would be Kirby Mass Attack, the probably most underrated Kirby game in my belief. Due to the 3DS being already out when this game released for the regular DS, Mass Attack never got the chance it deserves and is therefore a fairly unknown spin-off. Instead of relying on the traditional gameplay of copying the enemy's abilities, this game splits our favorite pink hero into 10 different Kirbys, which you have to control with the touch pen of the DS. Similarly to Pikmin, it's possible to toss these Kirbys into foes and the more Kirbys are attached to a monster, the faster they get the job done. It may sound like an unstoppable army, but each Kirby can only take two hits, and while it's possible to create new allies by eating food, you have to be always wary of approaching enemies. The bigger the group, the stronger you are, which is linked to a higher risk of getting hit thanks to your bigger voice vulnerability. But it's not only the unique gameplay that makes Kirby Mass Attack special even among the series. With only four words, it may sound like there isn't much variety going on, but all the levels are distinct in their approach and because you have to find the right level to progress, even the level selection screen is a puzzle by itself. Despite having only four words, the developers put much work behind each boss and all of them are just amazing in their staging. In addition, the soundtrack is composed by the legendary Shogo Sakai, the man behind 
behind many iconic musical pieces like Mother 3, the Kirby anime, as well as Kirby Air Ride. However, the most special trait of Kirby Mass Attack is probably how many references are implemented. Of course we have the obvious ones like the Squeak Squad from Kirby Mouse Attack, and most important of all, many characters from the animation show. They only show up in minigames, which are surprisingly good, but all of this just adds up to the charm and proves how much love was put into this game. Kirby's Dream Course is a very unique Kirby spin-off, and it stands out even among the countless Kirby spin-offs released throughout the 90s. When I first saw Kirby's Dream Course on the SNES Switch Online library back in 2019 when it was added, I had no idea what it was and what I had in store. At first glance, it looks very weird compared to the other Kirby games on the SNES, but it's definitely not worth sleeping on unless you lose all your HP. Kirby's Dream Course is basically a golf-like game, but it has a lot of unique aspects to it. The main objective is to defeat all the enemies in the area, which will reveal the hole, which you can try to hit Kirby into. The physics feel really well for a Super Nintendo game, and the controls are a bit confusing at first, but are easy to get used to. Unlike Mario Golf, there's no lack of content here, since there's 8 different courses, and there's different themes and challenges. Playing this game in single player is a fine experience, but the two player mode is where this game really shines. One player has to collect the most point stars and try to get into the hole before the other player, which provides a base for one of the funniest, wackiest multiplayer experiences on the SNES. You can try to knock the other player off the board to prevent them from gaining more points, which creates a more in-depth level of competition rather than just being surface level and allowing the players just to score points. I definitely recommend checking this game out and playing it with a friend since it's available on the Nintendo Switch through the SNES library. Unfortunately, Kirby's Dream Course never got a sequel, but there was originally a sequel in development. At Space World 1995, a demo was shown of a sequel to Dream Course on the Nintendo 64. This project would later be cancelled, but eventually the development shifted to work on what would be another underrated Kirby game, released nearly a decade later. Kirby Air Ride may still enjoy a cult following among the spin-offs and is by no means underappreciated, but it was penalized by <coughs> critics back when it came out, as one of the few fundraisers that didn't simply copy Mario Kart, Air Ride is way more different in its approach and features three completely dissimilar modes, Air Ride, Top Run and City Trial. Based on the title, Air Ride focuses on the racing aspect of the game and presents multiple action-packed tracks with crazy layouts and unique settings. Mirroring the simplicity of the franchise, the controls are extremely simple and concentrate only on a few buttons. This becomes quickly apparent when Kirby starts to move forward on its own, so the only thing you have to do is maneuvering your star. Maybe it sounds too streamlined, but I never got the feeling that this game tries to have competitive mechanics in terms of controls. You're supposed supposed to glide all over the place and, although there isn't much you can do in terms of unique tricks, the races are at least not based on luck or items. The better racer will always win and with multiple vehicles in your selection, there is enough variety to choose your own personal style. The same goes for City Trial, which is probably the mode that kept this game alive, but with good reason. In an open map, you collect all sorts of different items that boost your stats in order to win in a randomly chosen competition at the end. Random events events bring in spice into each round and even though the gameplay loop is basically always the same, no round feels similar. It's hard to explain, but City Trial is just one of these modes that get never boring even alone, so let's build an Air Raid 2 shrine and pray for a successor. It feels like I forgot something. Let me see. Air Raid? City Trial? Huh. Seems pretty fine to me. Anyways, those are what we consider to be the most underrated Kirby spin-offs. Out of the many Kirby spin-offs that were released over the years, these games definitely stood out since they were all very enjoyable and are memorable experiences. I really hope Nintendo and HAL give some of these games more recognition through means such as re-releases or even sequels. What are your favorite Kirby spin-offs, underrated or not? Let us know down in the comments. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel Kirby. He makes some great content about Kirby, along with other Nintendo-related topics. And I'm glad that he was able to join me in this video. 
Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, and make sure to check out my Discord server and Twitter if you want to. Goodbye.